Well, this morning I'm going to be sharing a message with you on the prayer of faith. I'm so passionate about prayer and uh, especially for a new covenant perspective. And I think it's one area that believers really do need to uh, renew their mind to. Because once you understand the, the what the new covenant is and the bounds within the new covenant and Jesus finished work, the one thing that should dramatically change should be our prayer life. Uh, but unfortunately, because we've been taught so much stuff, even within the Word of Faith circles, there's so much we've been taught about prayer and faith that it can become quite confusing. Um, and so I want to strip away all the man-made stuff and I want to help you in your prayer life and your prayer journey to help you to just get back to basics and, and just concentrate on your relationship with your loving, unconditionally loving Heavenly Father. And so I pray that this will really help you in your journey. This uh, message will go within uh, the New Covenant Prayer Series on my YouTube channel, which is uh, youtube.com forward slash Nerida Walker. So the prayer of faith is according to Mark 11, uh, 20 to 24. And so unfortunately, because there are so many different models of prayer, what it ends up doing is it can cause us to use prayer as a method or a formula, uh, rather than we seeing prayer as something we do within our relationship with a loving Heavenly Father. And that is the one thing that I want to expose uh, with the man-made stuff with prayer, so we can just highlight that, face that, and really come to a point to renew our mind to that truth that prayer is not about methods or formulas. There's nothing about any words that you say or pray or scriptures you say or pray. It's about relationship. And so as we continue in this New Covenant prayer series, you will see many different messages that will help you in this journey. Uh, one message that I believe would be great to help you is prayer and uh, Jesus' finished work. So just to come, I share in that message what Jesus has done, the basics and the foundational basics of what Jesus has already done for us through that finished work so then you can learn what things that we need to pray and other things what we don't need to pray for so it really is a mindset shift so i ask that you be open and uh, to be able to receive um, simple truth because that truth will make you free but we've got to get past all the methods and the traditions and the doctrines of men all the formulas everything we've learned about faith and prayer and just go back to simple basics because it's just it's just a shame that that's what prayer has become. So if you're like me and you've spent a lot of time in prayer and you're believing God for a breakthrough and you know and if you haven't seen any change after a while, then rather than continuing, I would encourage you to stop, take a breather before you get back on that treadmill and just really take that time out and reflect and seek God for a personal revelation and ask him to show you um, how to connect with him and how to pray or how to take authority in that situation. So um, that is a very simple, simple, easy step. And I always want to encourage you to go back to those simple basics. Because I think once we understand what the man-made stuff is, and basically it's stuff that's been added into Scripture or Scripture's been twisted, um, or it's a to-do list or, or anything that puts the pressure on you and it's about you doing something to get your breakthrough, like you having to pray a certain way or strive or labor a certain way, whatever, whether it's time, whether it's specific methods or formulas, we need to understand and identify the, that they are man-made. Sometimes they will work, sometimes they won't work. But ultimately, all you need is a relationship with the Lord and for Him to lead you by His indwelling Spirit. That is a lifetime journey. Learning about prayer, learning about faith is not a destination, but it is a lifestyle. It is a journey. We are all learning. We are all growing. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. Uh, actually, more correctly, I'm still unlearning because <laughs> I think there's so much we need to unlearn about faith and unlearn about prayer before we can come to the simple truth 
of what prayer and faith really is. But when we go through today's message on Mark 11, just a well-known passage of scripture, I hope that it will really highlight to you what we have through Jesus and his finished work. And it will help to transform the way you see prayer and how you relate to God and how you look at your circumstances. So once again, I just want you to have an open heart and mind um, because sometimes when there's new information that might be a bit different to what we've been taught before, um, we we need to be open and humble to to really let the Holy Spirit quicken and bring life to something. Um, I found this very challenging when I first started to learn and, and really dig into the word about what faith really was and what prayer really was. I found it so challenging because it was opposite to what I'd been taught before and what I had been teaching others and unfortunately a lot of the stuff that I had learnt was all pretty much based on my performance so let's get rid of all that and let's keep going and focusing to Jesus and, and what we already have through his finished work okay so this is just you know many there are many different prayer models there's so many I uh, don't have enough time to go through them today this is just one on the prayer of faith and um, there's all throughout this a New Covenant prayer series that I cover a couple of different models um, and different uh, what they look like, what I was taught before, some of what I had already taught before myself. And I expose some of these man-made prayer models uh, throughout this series and, and show you why they're man-made and just bring you back to the simple truth. But this is pretty much what I was taught what prayer was. So if you need a breakthrough, say there's a circumstance, there's something that you know, there's a prayer need, whether it's a new job, whether it's healing for New Life Ministries, whether it's for couples that need healing of infertility or for a baby. So there's a need, there's a prayer request, there's a desire, there's a circumstance, a situation or even emergency. So this is sort of the prayer model what I've been taught. So there's a need. And then what we need to do then is that we need to pray and go to God and pray. And then uh, once, you, once you follow all those prayer models and all the faith models and all the faith formulas, if you actually got it all right, you know, you've built up your faith, you've prayed the right prayer, you've included a few scriptures, you've done, you know, in Jesus' name, amen at the end and things like that, then God will actually hear you. And, you know, and that can go quite deep as it that you've dealt with everything in your life and you've gone through your life. And so if, you, if you're in the right position, then God will hear you, which is so incredibly wrong, that teaching is, because the Father is not like that at all. I think some of the models and some of the formulas we've been taught makes prayer and faith and a relationship with God so incredibly difficult. But remember, he is a loving heavenly father. He so loved you. He so loved the world that he sent Jesus. So whosoever believes will not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus came to give you life and life abundantly. Okay. And I love that. That is the simplicity. The father loves you unconditionally. If you're a believer, you are his child, his very spirit and his kingdom lives in you. So you've got to unlearn all the man-made stuff and just stick to what we have under the new covenant the simplicity of the new covenant so going back to this prayer model you've probably been taught this before you have a need you go to god if you've got everything right then he'll hear you and then this is what i was actually taught that god will then think and then he will respond and and what i had heard before and taught be, heard taught before i've never taught this because I've, I've never agreed with this is that god has three answers three main answers that you might receive through that prayer request so either yes no or wait okay and now if you understand scripture and you understand what jesus has done through the finished work of the cross you'll realize how incorrect this actually is you know in 2 corinthians 1 20 we know for example it says all the promises of god are yes and amen in christ you know the new living we're going to share that in a second says all the promises of god have been fulfilled already fulfilled in christ okay so when it comes to jesus and his finished work that is not a future tense promise that God is going to do for us one day in the future, but it's a past tense provision. So that's why it's so important we understand who Jesus is and what he has done for us and our position in that new covenant. So watch that prayer and Jesus finish work message because that will help you understand a little bit further. But in the prayer model, so that's what I was taught, that yes, no or wait 
totally flies in the, the face of the finished work and scripture itself, many different scriptures. And then finally, that God will act then, you know, according to those um, the three answers, yes, no, or wait, and then he will respond on his behalf or you maybe in his timing. So maybe you not, might need to wait a while for God's perfect timing. Uh, that is another man-made tradition and doctrine of men. Um, uh, I've got a message on my YouTube channel called God's Timing, the truth about understanding God's timing. And I go through how God's timing when it comes to Jesus' finished work is not scriptural. Because God's, God's time for your healing, God's time for forgiveness, God's time for you uh, when it comes to what Jesus has already done on that cross, God's timing was over 2,000 years ago. Jesus is God's yes answer to you. So if Jesus provided it, if Jesus paid the price for it, if Jesus has redeemed you from it, he is your yes answer. Okay, Jesus is God's yes to you. So that's why it's so imperative we do understand who he is and what he has already done for us. Because when it comes to that, God's timing doesn't come into play. God cannot withhold, block or withdraw what he has already freely given. So that in a nutshell is, is really how this, to show you how this prayer model is not scriptural. But this is what many of us have been taught. So we have a need, we go to God, we've got to get everything right, we've got to dot every I, cross every T, make sure we're in faith, we haven't doubted, you know, we've, we're just in the right spot and we're following and we're serving, we're giving, we've got everything perfect, and then God will actually hear us. And no, no joke, that's what I was taught. Then God will weigh it up and then he'll respond when he feels like it. But please, let's unlearn this model. This is not a scriptural model. This is a man-made model and it's based on circumstances. It's based on people experiences. Okay, rather than on Jesus and his finished work and that being the authority here, it's on people's circumstances. So their circumstances and their experiences become the authority and become the, the litmus test, if you like, and the guide. But let's go to scripture. Let's go to Jesus and let's look at him and look at the Father and unlearn all this man's made stuff so that we can just come to the Father and learn and grow and let him guide and lead us in our journey. So I hope this is helping you so far. <laughs> there will be answers. So we all want answers too, don't we? When we have a prayer need, we want answers. But unfortunately, many do see prayer as a way to convince God. And that's why there's so many methods and formulas with faith and with prayer, because many believers see prayer and faith as a way to convince God and, and to to go one step further for me, um, what I really felt that I was doing, if everything I was doing with faith and prayer, really, in a nutshell, I was trying to manipulate God, trying to play on his heartstrings, you know, really, <laughs> to try and to convince him of why he should answer me and my prayer need. I, I'm quite happy to expose that, um, whether it, it's um, something we do intentionally or unintentionally, that's pretty much what the prayer models and faith models look like today. It's all about moving the hand of God. But I'm telling you, this is the wrong concept of both faith and prayer. Because what this does, it makes prayer uh, all dependent on our own ability, on our own faith ability, on the, how we pray or what we pray, and based on our performance, how good we are, you know, <laughs> where we're doing everything right. And, and really, it, it's not based on the new covenant. It's all an old covenant concept, to be honest with you. So it anything that puts the breakthrough totally and solely dependent on you and what you can do. Um, and, and look, yes, there is a part we need to play. But when it's based on your performance and you have to look at yourself and look at what you can do or what you can do better, then we really need to expose that as a man-made uh, doctrine put it back where it belongs under the old covenant, which is under the Mosaic law, and really renew our mind to the new covenant and what we already have through Jesus and his finished work. Because prayer and faith is not about moving the hand of God. When you understand that finished work, you know that God has already moved when he sent forth his son Jesus into this world to redeem you and pay the price for everything that came in through that fall in the Garden of Eden. So uh, that is so important that we understand that simple, simple truth. 
So when it comes to prayer, religion, the traditions and doctrines of men, which is really what religion, and when I say what religion is, it's man-made stuff. It really teaches that we have a big part to play in prayer. Okay, that if we don't pray, pray, then God can't do anything. Again, that is totally uh, not man, that is totally man-made. It is not scriptural, and it doesn't line up with the finished work. The other thing we've been t- I was taught is that we need to ask in order to receive. If you don't ask, then you won't receive. So we're going to learn today what, in context, what really what ask and receive is. And it's not how we've been taught, as you'll see, of, we'll, go, we'll go through this message. So prayer under any prayer model or faith model uh, or formula or anything like that, when it's putting the, the um, uh, like de- making it dependent on your ability, how, how much faith you have, how well you've prayed, how well you act or respond in life, and what your relationship with God looks like, what your walk with God looks like, you know, your church life, etc. What that does, and you'll see here in my notes here, it breeds insecurity in our relationship with God. Because if it, you don't see any answers, then what it does is we either start to blame God or we blame ourselves. Okay, we start to analyze and start going through our lives of what have I done wrong? What am I missing? What do I need to do more of? And that's what I used to do. Like, what am I missing? What do I now need here? Okay, now I need to build my faith more. Maybe I need to pray more. Maybe I need to fast. Maybe I need to study scripture even more. You know, maybe I need to give more. Maybe I need to serve more. Maybe I'm being disobedient somewhere. You know, and we've already covered what obedience and disobedience is. You know, it's the simplicity is hearing and responding. Because the original definition of obedience means to hear and listen. Okay, it's not to do. But unfortunately, that's what Christendom has become, a list of to-do a to-do list, you know, things that we must do before God will hear or respond. And once again, that does not line up with the finished work. So when it comes to prayer, when it comes, if you need a breakthrough in your life in any area, and we're all guilty of this, I am sure, I am very guilty of this, what you can end up doing is that if you don't see um, a breakthrough, if you don't see answers, what we do is we then judge our relationship with God based on those outcomes, okay? rather than, or or by experiences, rather than what I've already covered, rather than by what Jesus has done through his finished work, which is outlined in his word. But never judge your relationship with God or never judge your prayer life or your faith life based on outcomes or experiences. Okay, we need to base our relationship with God, our prayer life, our faith on the word, on Jesus' finished work. Okay, there's so many reasons why that is dangerous to to judge your relationship with God. It will destroy your faith. It'll put you, like I've already shared, you'll start to self-analyze and you start to feel distant from God. I go through this in a little bit more detail in my message in the New Covenant Prayer Series on unanswered prayer. So I encourage you to listen to that. I would actually encourage you to listen to the majority of the um, lessons. They're all on my YouTube channel. You can watch them or, or listen to them if you've got the um, audio um, there for them. And, and to be able to hear and listen to most of those messages before you get to unanswered prayer because then what I share in that message will make a lot more sense to you. So if we base our relationship with God, if we base our prayer life, our faith life based on outcomes, when there's no change, where does that leave us then? Okay. Okay. So what we do is then we either blame God, we look at God, and that's where all these man-made traditions and doctrines have come from, that maybe God says yes or no or wait. Maybe there's a perfect timing for him to actually respond here. You know, So we start to judge our relationship with God and we look to him. And there's so many, so many doctrines, so many things that have come out of that. Maybe he's trying to teach you something or maybe you've got sin in your life. Maybe maybe you know, you're know you not in the right place. Maybe you're disobedient, all that sort of stuff. So then what that causes us to do is we then look to ourselves and we blame and we judge ourselves. And again, like I've already shared, we start to self-analyze. And we, we go, well, where do I, did I miss it then? What do I need to do? Maybe I need to get rid of curses. Maybe I need to repent from stuff. Maybe this, maybe that. But it causes us to become introspective 
and self-analyze and we've totally missed the new covenant and the finished work of the cross whenever you approach the father never approach him based on your own performance or ability because what you can do or not do for the father even all the good stuff you think you can do as far as the father is concerned your own self-righteousness and what you can do is like filthy rags the only thing that pleases the father is faith Hebrews 11.6 tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please him. You know, so it's about putting our faith in Jesus and Jesus' performance and not our own. So this is huge when it comes to prayer and faith. It is a really huge learning curve for many of us because we do need to unlearn all this man-made stuff that it's not about us. It's not about my faith and how much faith I have. It's not about how much I pray, uh, you know, the prayer of faith and I've got this right i've got that right i've included scriptures i've done this i've done that it's not about that it's about who jesus is and what jesus has already done for you okay so faith rests in who jesus is it's about his performance and not your own and so while yes there are things we do need to do in our journey and in our breakthrough um, it is not based on that on us doing those things or dependent on the breakthrough by what we do or don't do okay it's all really very simply it's about being led by the holy spirit he will guide and lead you in your journey the bottom line is prayer what i want to bring you to and i'm not covering this in in its fullness today just due to time i want to stick to pr the prayer of faith is that prayer is how you have a relationship with god Okay, and you'll you'll learn that as we go through this series. Is prayer, prayer basically means that that you are hearing and then you're responding to God as He leads you. Prayer is not God hearing you and then responding to you and your prayer requests. That is huge. That is a massive learning curve, unlearning curve. But when you know that truth, that truth will make you free. Okay, so I've already covered this, but from these two points, when there's no breakthroughs or we start judging our relationship with God or our faith and our prayer life based on outcomes, what that does, we either judge God or we judge ourselves. And that's why there's so many traditions and doctrines of men there. So many prayer models, so many faith models, so many prayer and faith formulas. But let's strip it all away and go back to basics and keep things simple. Okay, new com covenant truth is so important. We understand what the new covenant is, that we're saved by grace through faith as a gift of God, not of work so that no man can boast and understand that finished work because then when you know that and you're established in that truth, your whole prayer life will change. How you approach God will change. How you look at your circumstances, good or bad, will change because you'll see them through a different perspective, through a different viewpoint. Okay, and, and really when you do understand that finished work, you understand the new covenant, the finished work, what um, God has already provided for you, then you will realize there's so much stuff that we don't actually need to pray for because you don't need to pray or ask God to do what he's already done. So the prayer of faith, to be able to pray in faith, like I've asked the question there, when you understand the finished work, is it really a true biblical model or a way to approach God today? And as you learn through this new covenant prayer series, no, it is not. We don't need to ask or pray or beg God to do what he has already freely provided for us. Okay, that is such a huge mindset shift. Rather, we need to know that what we've already inherited through uh, being children of God, knowing what Jesus has already done for us, our position in the kingdom, who Jesus is now in us as new creations, who we are in him and where we're seated, our position and our authority. So then we can start seeing God's kingdom uh, advancing here in this fallen world uh, and that comes you know to see that manifesting is also in your life and also through your life so that you can then minister that truth to other people okay i've already shared this but this is the scripture i was showing out about before when when believers say to you that sometimes god might say yes or no or wait this is the scripture this is the truth that you need to remind yourself of 
2 Corinthians 1.20 in the New Living Translation says, For all of God's promises have, or you know, let's let's spell this out, have been, that's past tense. So have already been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. Okay, Jesus is God's yes answer to you. And through Christ our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. Sean actually did a message in our New Covenant uh, prayer series on In Jesus' Name, Amen. And he, he shared in that message how the word Amen actually means, yes, so be it. Okay, so be it. Talking, It's talking about the finished work of the cross. So God has said yes through Jesus. So now we need to say the Amen, yeah, so be it. Okay, that is our response to what God has already done. Okay, and that's really what, what faith is. We're responding to what God has already done for us. So let's redefine the prayer of faith today, okay? Because I think that, you know, this was me. I really felt and I really struggled in prayer and faith because I there was a massive period of time there where I felt that I lacked faith and I struggled with doubt and unbelief. Um, I was taught that you can't, cannot have any doubt. You cannot have any unbelief because that you won't get anything from God. So even an ounce, even an inkling of doubt or unbelief. But what that does, that places us in uh, guilt and shame and condemnation. And once again, we start looking at our performance. We start struggling and getting confused okay, about faith and about prayer. And, and the second that we have a doubt, the second we feel flat, the second that we take our eyes off Jesus, we feel that we that's it, I've missed it, I've lost it. It. I've got to start all over again. But once again, this is another man-made tradition and doctrine. When you understand the simplicity of what doubt is and unbelief is, then you'll realize as a new covenant believer, you don't need to worry about these things. Okay, if you're a new covenant believer, you believe in Jesus, we need to stop worrying about our faith, stop worrying about doubt and unbelief, and just continue to learn how to trust and rest in who Jesus is and what he's already done for us. Okay, so we, I've already shared this. We've got to continue to rest in who Jesus is and his finished work. Because really when we want to break this down, if our breakthrough is solely dependent on how much faith we have, how we've built our faith, how good we are as a person, um, as a believer, you know, by what we do, uh, how much we pray, uh, also is then that means the breakthrough is dependent on our performance and what we do. It's dependent on our ability. Okay, so in a way, it's almost like you were earning. And I actually saw prayer and believe that's how prayer was. Uh, when I first became a believer and when I first um, started a ministry, that was a few years later, but I would listen to any messages and videos and, you know, back in the old days, the VHS recorders and <laughs> before we had DVDs and the rest, is I would buy any tape series or video series on the anointing about healing and the anointing. But every single series that I listened to and I watched and, I, and all the stuff that I studied from what I was taught, it was all based on our performance about how much time you can pray, how much you can invest into the kingdom in, in many different areas, even investing in fasting and prayer and all the rest. But again, that's based on your ability. And while it can help you to get to a certain understanding or revelation on God by spending so much time, it is not. It is man-made. It's not the way or the model to get the anointing. If you understand the new covenant and the finished work of the cross, when you accepted Jesus, you already have the anointing. Jesus is the anointed one and the anointed one lives in you. Scripture tells us so clearly that we have already been given the fullness of Christ. As he is so are we here in this world you don't get a little bit of anointing then by what you do you build it up and get more okay it's not the same with faith it's same with everything else that we've inherited through jesus 
when you accept Jesus, we all have the same ability. Every single person, whether you've been a believer for five minutes, five weeks, or five years, or 50 years, we all have the same ability to do what Jesus did and greater because we all have the same spirit. In fact, those that have been uh, believers longer, actually, the truth be known, we have a whole lot more we need to unlearn so we can get to that simple basic truth. And that's why you can see new, new believers that come in that see so many breakthroughs and answers to prayer because they haven't been taught out of the simplicity of what a relationship with God is like. You know, and so there, I do believe that we really need to start questioning some of the things we've been taught so we can go back to simple basics. But once again, your breakthrough is not determined on, on what you can do. It's determined on who Jesus is and what he has done. It's through relationship is where you learn to hear God's voice and he can guide and lead you in your journey. I mean, that is the simplicity of what prayer is. And, uh, you know, and I've got a whole series here to be able to help you to get to that simple point. And there's a whole series of messages because there's so much stuff we need to unlearn till we can really appreciate and come to the truth of those simple basics. But they're the foundations of what we have.